hello everyone welcome to this video in this video we will be continuing with our topic of self adjoint and bounded linear operators we wanted in the very starting to know about the properties the in fact the spectral properties for the spectral uh, self adjoint and bounded linear operators right so now we wanted to represent that particular operator which we are either defining from some given hilbert space to the given hilbert space uh, or we are defining it from some space to some another space right this operator could be bounded it could be unbounded and uh, it could be linear non linear and so on we are particularly talking about operators which are bounded in nature they are self adjoint in nature and more importantly they are linear right so uh, we are representing we wanted to represent this operator in terms of projections so this is the idea here why we wanted to do, do that and how we can do that how we can proceed with uh, with that and how these projections would be required and are uh, would are capable to represent the spectral properties for these op operators we are going to see all these things in the upcoming lectures so here Uh, our aim is to represent the self adjoint linear operators on the given Hil hilbert space in terms of simple operators which we are calling as projections so that is the aim of the current lecture so and why do we wanted to do that so let's have a look why do we wanted to do, do that because to obtain information about certain complicated operators which are generally with the given physical phenomena as i have told you before also that generally is represented in terms of these kind of linear operators sometimes they are linear sometimes they are non linear depending on what application we are talking about so whichever complicated operator we are having we can obtain information about that by studying the properties of projections why because projections are more easier in comparison to these operators right and moreover the spectral properties of these operators they are obtained using projections which is what we wanted to do here which is our ultimate aim here in this uh, and further lectures right so how do we define this spectral family which is associated with the given operator t so we have a term which is known as spectral family so how do we define that suppose we have some self adjoint linear operator defined from a hilbert space h to the same hilbert space h right so the family of projections that is used for this purpose is come uh, comes under the property uh, com comes under the name of this spectral family so we uh, let's understand this term spectral family when we are talking about a hilbert space which is finite dimensional so that means the dimension is defined and it is finite so in this case for uh, let's take an example suppose we are talking about some operator t here which is defined from the hilbert space h to h and what is h in this case this is the given unitary space if you remember what is that unitary space is it is the complex n tuple complex space right space of n tuples of complex numbers so here how do you uh, have a vector here in this space so you have say x1 x2 and so on up to xn in total you would have n elements and all of these x1 x2 up to xn they would be complex numbers right so this is your space and you have defined on this space an operator t this is a bounded operator why because whenever we are talking about finite dimensional normed space then every linear operator is bounded right so this is the case here so therefore our operator t is bounded and moreover if uh, we are also able to choose a basis for this space h what is that this is a hermitian matrix this uh, this thing is already known to us right so uh, let's call the basis which is the hermitian matrix by the name t again t represents our operator and uh, let's call our matrix as t also right so in that case we wanted to calculate we wanted to see the spectral properties right so basically we wanted to see what are the spectral properties for this operator t for that we'll be inspecting what are what are the spectral properties for this uh, matrix over here and in case of finite dimensional cases you know the spectrum that 
द स्पेक्ट्रल वैल्यूज आर नथिंग बट द आइगन वैल्यूज सो इन दिस केस ऑल्सो द आइगन वैल्यूज आर देयर एंड बिकॉज दिस इज अ हरमिशन मेट्रिक्स एंड यू नो द आइगन वैल्यूज ऑफ हरमिशन मेट्रिक्स दे आर रियल इन नेचर right because the given hilbert space is finite dimensional and for the finite dimensional space all the spectral properties are the eigen values so in this case let's assume that if, uh, because our space is n dimensional so the operator t and uh, therefore the matrix t would have n different eigen values right so let's call those eigen values by the name lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and so on up to lambda n where lambda 1 is the least smallest eigen value lambda n is the largest eigen value for the sake of uh, nomenclature we are just writing this thing so now we could use this result that whenever we have a bounded self adjoint linear operator defined on a hilbert space then all the eigen values if they exist they are real and moreover the eigen vectors they are orthogonal to each other corresponding to different eigen values they are orthogonal to each other so if that is the case we have already concluded that we have n different eigen values and all of them are real right so uh, therefore this matrix t would have orthonormal set of n eigen vectors corresponding to different eigen values we would have different eigen uh, vectors as well so let's call that uh, those eigen vectors as x1 x2 x3 and so on up to xn where this xj corresponds to lambda j right what was your lambda j lambda j was the eigen value and xj was your eigen vector right so we can write these as column vectors what the eigen vectors as column vectors that is the property that you already know from linear algebra right now all of these eigen vectors they form a basis for the given hilbert space that means if they form a basis so every element here x they that has a unique representation by writing down the linear combination of all these eigen vectors so how you are writing this thing you are writing any element say you take x from the given hilbert space then you are writing x as some element gamma 1 times x1 which where what is this gamma 1 this is some coefficient right some coefficient some scalar quantity which is taken from the given field right so you have gamma 1 x1 plus gamma 2 x2 plus gamma 3 x3 and so on up to gamma n xn so we are writing this x as a linear combination here where this gamma j that represents the coefficients and are obtained and these coefficients how they are obtained because we have the orthonormality of these eigen vectors so therefore we could take the inner product of whole of this thing with xk right so if that is uh, the case so uh, that means on the right hand side it would be gamma j's would be as such and taking the inner product of xj with xk now using the ortho normality whenever they are equal we have one otherwise we have the element as zero so these vectors they would be obtained when you use the ortho normality so suppose we are uh, In this case also variable quantity so you have 1 2 3 up to n so so suppose we are do taking the inner product with x1 so in that case it would be x inner product with x1 so what would be this thing this thing would be equal to gamma 1 right inner product of, of x j x1 with x1 then gamma 2 inner product of x1 with x2 then so similarly we will keep on doing this gamma n in a product of x1 with xn so this x1 would be kept fixed right so let's call this as x1 and this as x right so in this case uh, you would have this quantity here as equal to 1 right this as equal to 0 this as equal to 0 and all other elements in between are also 0 because we are using the ortho normality property here so that means you are obtaining gamma 1 uh, nothing at uh, not, nothing but the inner product of x with 
x1 right so you understood how this calculation is done so we are writing this x as linear combination of xj's what are these xj's they form the basis for the given uh, operator and hence the given matrix and basically the, what what are they they are the eigen vectors corresponding to different eigen values of the given matrix right so uh, we have this thing and more, moreover you could write this inner product as x to the x transpose xj bar right why because using the definition if you remember the properties uh, and the definition of this inner product in the unitary space we have defined it to be like this only right so this xj is nothing but the eigen vector of this vector t and moreover this uh, because this is an eigen vector so you could write t x j equal to lambda, lambda j x j where what is this t this is the given matrix this is the definition of eigen values and eigen vectors right here your x j is obviously not equal to 0 so let's mark this as equation 3 now what we can do we can apply t onto the equation 1 so here for this expression here we can apply t on to both sides so we, we would have t of x that is equal to summation lambda j is a scalar so it could be taken outside t so it would be t x j here so we would have t x is equal to summation lamb, uh, gamma j t x j right and instead of this t x j you could write this gamma j x j so you have sorry this lambda j x j so you have this as equation number four now here we have defined and uh, written down the self adjoint bind bounded linear operator in terms of the scalar value eigen values and eigen vectors of the given operator so that means we have reduced the problem of representing the self adjoint bounded linear operator to just the i to just the eigen value problem so you see how easy we have made out this problem so that is one kind of representation so how and when do we use the projections so first of all if you remember how do we define a projection so the this projection defined by pj where what is j j is the index which varies from 1 to n right this is defined from the given hilbert space to the hilbert space such that it would map some element x from h to gamma j x j gamma j is again some scalar x j is the given eigen vector so this j and this j should be the same so the indexes would be same so what is your p1 p1 is your gamma 1 x1 p2 is gamma 2 x2 and p similarly pn is gamma n x n right so obviously this pj would represent projection in and in fact what kind of projection this is the orthogonal projection why because all these eigenvectors they are orthonormal in nature so the given projection is orthogonal and this projection maps h onto the given eigenspace of t corresponding to lambda j uh, why because we are taking the eigenvectors corresponding to this lambda j of the given operator t so if that is so if we are writing pj as what if we are writing this pj of x that is your gamma j x j so you could replace this gamma j x j with pj x no problem in that so in our equation you can replace this lambda j x j with pj x right sorry this uh we have x uh, pjx representing with gamma j xj so gamma j xj in equation number one this gamma j xj could be replaced with pjx okay so you, we we have this thing that your x is now written in this form summation pjx right so here uh, if we remove this x here operator x on both sides so and if we are simply talking in terms of operators because x was some arbitrary elements which was taken from the hilbert space so this thing would be true for all the elements so in general it would be equal to if we remove the x here so it would be nothing but the identity operator because you know this x could be written as i of i x is nothing but x only so in place of this x you could write i x so if you remove this x and this x from here so you have the identity operator is equal to summation of pj right 
so this uh, so that means when you add up all the projections so they will simply give you the identity operator over here so this is your equation 6 right so basically we have represented the given operator t in terms of projections so this shows that we can represent the spectrum of t right in terms of simple operators which is nothing but the projections so remember that we have worked and solved the case whenever we have this finite dimension finite dimensional space with us when whenever we have infinite dimensional case the case would be a little uh, difficult and uh, further discussion would be required in that case so i hope you understood this uh, concept well that is it for this video thank you for watching